Hello learners, today's topic is retainers in FPD. This is the very big topic, so we will learn this topic in part wise. And this is the part one of retainers in fixed partial denture. And I am Dr. Chaya Pandey, your mentor. In the last video on FPD, which was on the components of FPDs, we have studied that there are three components of FPDs. First one is retainer, second is pontic, and the third one is connector. And let us quickly we have a look on the components of FPDs once again. So here this is the tooth we want to replace by the fixed partial denture. In this, this is a pontic. These are retainers. So why are they called as retainers? Because they keep the spontic or prosthesis in place with the help of adjacent abutment tooth. Here these are abutment tooth and these retainers helps to retain the prosthesis on abutment tooth. Now the third one is connector. This retainer and this spontic is connected by connector which connect the retainer to the pontic. So we have retainer pontic and connector. Here we have connector. And today we will learn in detail about the retainers. Retainers by definition GPT-8 it is the part of FPD which unites the abutments to the remainder of the restoration. This retainer is the part of fixed partial denture that unites this abutment tooth to the rest of the restoration. Okay. Now what are the classifications of retainers? Retainers are basically classified on the basis of coverage. Second one is material and the third one is mechanism. According to the coverage, we have full coverage retainer, partial coverage retainer and the conservative retainers. According to material, we have all metal, all ceramic, metal ceramic and the acrylic one. Last one according to mechanism. According to mechanism, we have extra coronal retainer, intra coronal retainer and the radicular retainers. First one is according to coverage. We have full coverage retainer. See if we cover all the surfaces of abutment tooth on all the sides, then we got a full coverage retainers. These retainers give maximum retention and mainly used for extensive damage abutment tooth or RCG treated tooth or when we have long edentulous span area. This is how a full coverage or complete coverage veneer retainer look like. It covers the abutment tooth from all the surfaces. Now what are the advantages of full coverage retainers? First one is high strength, second one is better retention, third one is it offers higher resistance to replacement and the fourth one is aesthetically acceptable if PFM all or ceramic. Here we see that this full coverage restoration covers our abutment tooth from all the surfaces. So we get a higher resistance to replacement, higher strength of prosthesis, better retention as we have better area for cementation. So we get a better retention. And if we give this prosthesis made up of all ceramic or PFM that is porcelain fused with metal, then this is also aesthetically acceptable. Now what are the disadvantages of full coverage linear retainers? First one is more tooth removal and the second one is cost effective as we have to cover the all surface of the abutment tooth so we have to prepare every surface of the abutment tooth that is we have to remove more teeth and the second one is cost effective it is costlier than the partial coverage retainer now what are the indications and contraindications of full coverage or complete coverage veneer retainers indication first one is extensive tooth loss second one is endodontically treated tooth and the third one is post and core see we can give this full coverage or complete coverage retainer where there is loss of extra tooth material that is if it is more curious or the tip is endodontically treated we have to support that tooth from all the surfaces so we give full coverage or complete coverage veneer restoration or if the tooth is treated with the post and core so we have to support that tooth also so we give a more strong retainer that is full coverage or complete coverage retainer now what are the contraindications of full coverage retainer where tooth conservation is priority that is we have to conserve the tooth we have to do minimum crown preparation then this full coverage retainer are not indicated now the second one is partial coverage these restoration do not involve all the surfaces for preparation that is they require less amount of tooth preparation and they are aesthetically more superior if we leave this facial surface this buccal surface unprepared and we give a crown or retainer over there then these retainers are called as a partial coverage retainers here why do I say superior aesthetic 
because usually the facial or labial wall of anterior and posterior surface were left unprepared. So we didn't place the retainer on the facial surface or buccal surface of teeth. So that have a natural teeth surface which already looks aesthetic. Now what are the advantages of partial coverage retainers? First one is conserve tooth structure. See this is the partial coverage retainer that is we have to prepare less amount of abutment tooth. So already it covers the more tooth structure. Second one is superior aesthetic. We already discussed that we are leaving buccal and facial wall unprepared so it's aesthetically acceptable. Third one is easy access to supragingival margin for finishing. See for preparing tooth for partial coverage retainers we have to keep the gingival margin supra so there is a easy access for finishing. Now the fourth one is less gingival involvement and the fifth one is less purple and periodontal involvement. We already know we have to prepare less tooth structure so the gingival involvement, pulpal involvement and periodontal involvement will be less. Now what are the disadvantages of partial veneer retainers or partial coverage retainers? First one is less retention and resistance to displacement. We are seeing here that this partial coverage retainer won't cover the surface from all sides so we are getting less area for retention and resistance. Second one is skillful preparation is crucial to avoid metal displays. This type of restoration need more accurate form of good preparation so that the metal in the retainer is not visible and it fulfills its requirement of aesthetic superiority. Now what are the indications and contraindications of partial coverage restoration? Indication first one is to restore the moderately damaged tooth that is if the tooth is not that much damaged we can give partial coverage retainer. Second one is intact and well supported buccal wall. Here we have to leave buccal or facial wall unprepared. So the buccal and facial wall should be in good condition. Now what are the contraindication? As retainer for long span FPD. If longer FPD is given, we can't give this type of partial coverage retainer. Second one is short clinical crown, RCT treated, high carious index and shape and alignment of the tooth. If there are shortcomings like if we have a clinical crown short, RCT treated tooth or already weak, we have to give the full coverage retainer, high carious index like we can't repeat whole processes just by failure of one retainer. So the patient having high carious index we can't give partial coverage retainer or if the shape and alignment of tooth is not favorable they are also contraindicated. Now what are the types of partial coverage crown? So depending upon the area covered we have named it as a 3 4th crown, reverse 3 4th crown, modified 3 4th crown, 4 5th crown, 7 8th crown, proximal half crown and pin ledge. I know these terms are little bit confusing but it's very easy and interesting too. We'll learn about these partial coverage crown in detail in next part. Thank you. If you find this video helpful, do like it and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel Icon Shadow. Let's talk dental.